Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and I finally made something that I've wanted to do for a real long time. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you might have seen me pose some of these questions. These are some interesting multi-choice questions that every once in a while I would post on the community tab. I think this is an easy, fun way to learn, and I definitely would like to do some more of these. By answering some questions and then reading the detailed answer with all the links, by doing that you can really learn in a really nice, fun way. So I've always wanted to make this a more regular thing. But when I post these, this was all just an entire manual process. And considering how I'm always so busy working on so many things at the same time, I really couldn't find the time to constantly post this. So the goal that I've had for literally years at this point was to simply automate this process. And lately, I finally found some time and I've been exactly working on this project. On my website, I made a real nice system where every three days a new question is selected automatically. This is picked randomly from the list of questions, so it's also fun for me since I wrote a ton of questions and I don't remember half of them. Questions like, for example, over here, what is the equivalent to input get mouse button down on new input system package? So is it input system dot get mouse button down? Or is it mouse dot current dot left button was press this frame? Or is it player input dot mouse read value of ball? So if you want to answer, take a few seconds and try to answer. So in my case, I'm pretty sure I know the answer and I'm pretty sure that it's this one. And yep, I was thankfully correct. Like it says here, the new input system is awesome and a lot more capable, although that comes at the cost of increased complexity. So doing something like a simple button check that is super easy in the input manager, but not many people know you can also very easily do it in the new input system. Here's another interesting question. So can you modify the transform.4 directly in order to rotate a transform? So yes or no? In my case, I do know the answer is yes, because this is my preferred method for rotating a transform. So let's vote. And yep, I am indeed correct. You can modify the transform forward in order to rotate a transform. The simplest way is really just calculate a direction to your target and then set it to that direction. That will make the transform point directly towards your target. Alternatively, you can also modify the transform.up to match the collision normal. This is exactly what I used in the video on how I made the scout probe launcher from Outer Wilds. Basically how that scout probe is thrown and then it attaches to a place and gets pointed to the opposite of where it lands. Or alternatively, when working in 2D, it can be super useful for some kind of top-down shooter. Here's another fun one. So what is the difference between action float and funk float? So are they both the same? Does action take a float parameter and funk return a float? Or does funk float take a float parameter and action float return float? So which one is it? I'm going to take a random guess and let's say that it's the third one. And nope, this is actually incorrect. So the correct answer was B. So action float takes a float parameter and funk float returns a float. Both these are types of delegates. Actions are delegates that return void and can have multiple parameters or none of them. Whereas funks, they are delegates that return a specific type. Delegates are super awesome. I definitely encourage you to learn about them. I cover them in detail here and I've used them in tons of places. Like for example, in the video where I talked about how to make an HTTP request from directly inside Unity, in doing this class, I made a really nice callback so it actually gets the output back into a delegate. Or alternatively, for interacting with all kinds of cloud providers, usually that is done through an HTTP request. So again, you would use a delegate in order to not have the game freeze up whilst waiting for a response. And a secondary thing related to this question is the type inside the angle brackets. This is a generic, which I also have a video on, and it's also another super useful thing. So as you can see, these are fun, interesting questions related to C-sharp, Unity, or game development in general. If you'd like to set up a habit of getting these, I made an automated email notification. You can go to the website and then log in, then go into your user page. Then here you can manage your email notifications. And there's a new one so you can receive every question of the day. Like I said, these are all automatically generated. So every three days, there's a brand new question. Or alternatively, you can just see it on the website. I made it over here, right underneath the last three videos. I think this is an interesting way to increase your knowledge by answering some interesting questions every few days. One thing that I always say is that it's much better to learn something regularly as opposed to making a huge sprint and then not touching anything for an entire week. So making a habit of answering a question every three days, that should hopefully help you learn better. And as you saw, regardless if you get the answer right or wrong, I made sure to include lots of extra details in the actual answer alongside links to any helpful videos that I've already done. So whether you get it wrong or you already know the answer, either way, you might still learn something new. This is something that I've wanted to make for a long time and I finally made it, so I really hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.